<laughs> so that was the little little dogs that's noisy and snappy. Come on, away. Yeah, come on. Good boy, son. Good boy, son, good boy. Come on. You got enough dogs there? <laughs> Right, he's he's dead friendly, but he's a puppy. He likes to lunge and play with dogs. So well, these two these two are friendly as well. Right, these two are not. Oh, I can hear that bloody hell! Just great. Right. <laughs> these are just two puppies. It's always the little ones, like part-time uh, Rottweilers. Yeah, well, he's, he's not seven years old. Hey, hey, hey! Enjoy your walk anyway. <laughs> hey, wait. Wait. Good boy, son. Good boy. What a racket. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Don't pull. Hey, hey. Get a drink, yeah, son. Yeah. Yeah, get a drink. Get a drink, son. Do you want a drink? Good boy. Good boy, son. Wait. Don't pull. Don't pull. Right, so there's one, two, three, four, five sheep. Five sheep in that first field. Right. I'm just one of these blokes um, living locally in the in the village here, because it just appeared from nowhere. Right, so we're now coming up to the the crossroads where that um, village bypass brings out onto this main track again here, where that gentleman is now with his four dogs. Yeah, bang. So every every when I give him a a quick jerk and I say, hey, and I shout at him. He stops, look, looks dead <laughs> and looks up, looks up at me. Hey, he's probably doing a circular walk. He's going along the main track there and circle back to where his house is at the top end, probably. Hey. Oh man, will you stop running around my legs, you? God, he's a bloody pain in the ass. Right, so here's the crossroads I'm coming up to with these two big piles of stones there. And there's a notice board on the left hand side there. Look. Hey. Don't pull. Good boy, son. Good boy. It's funny, I've come all this way to come out into a forest where hopefully I wouldn't come up and bump into any dog walkers. <laughs> In the first quarter of a mile, I pass a, a bloke with four dogs. <laughs> There's a car coming back. I wonder if he's um, the warden type thing, forestry warden in his car. It just seems strange that that car's just gone up and then there's another car coming back down. I saw just a storage shed there with all those green sleeves that they put on the bottom of new and planted trees and some very, very, very thick Railway sleepers piled up there. Now the other reason why I brought them here is because hardly any you, you hardly see any traffic at all. Another dog water. 
Bloody hell. Come on, leave them, son. Leave them. So they must be going to walk along the top of there and bear off to the right and cut back through the houses. Right, so uh, that's why I see in there with a the big arrow, all lorries. And that's where you come along when you turn left, coming into the village, just before you get the village, you turn left and the road brings you right round in a half circle, brings you back to here. And there's your sign for Fallow Lease. It's telling you this way to go to Fallow Lease. Well, that was just a normal standard car, wasn't it? I don't think that's uh, the commissioned guy. Forestry park guys. It's just uh, somebody that's been up in the forestry. Probably done an overnight camp. Now he's gone home. Good boy, son. Good boy. Right, so you go up here and halfway up, there's a main track goes off to the right. And that's the one that you take to go towards Red Path Abandoned Farm. And if you continue, it takes you along towards Fallow Lies Farm. Hey, come on. He's just pulling me close at the edge of the grass because he, he's peeing on everything. <laughs> Believe me, sent. Hey, hey! But he's pulling me, pulling me out of the shop. Right, come on. Come on. So isn't that amazing? I come, I drive quite a distance away from home to come in this absolutely huge, and I mean huge, forest uh, in the hopes of being able to let him off and not worrying about bumping into another soul or any other dog walkers. And like I say, Within the first half a mile, two dog walkers and cars coming up and doing the road. <laughs> it's amazing. Come on, son. Away. Come on. Away. Come on. Good boy. I think my daughter's put um, tie wraps or something on the plastic uh, clip that snapped off when he was pulling like hell. And I think was was the hook um, was on the two eyes. It was only on one. And with him being powerful and the way he was pulling, it just he's just snapped the plastic fastener. Just come off. So I think my daughter's just temporarily fixed it. Because it's 11 at a time, these colours. Good boy, son, good boy. Good boy. Right, so I'm just doing a walk through the forest. So I can let him off, so you have a good walk about. So by the time I take him back home and drop him off, he'll be um, ready to lie down after his tea. And settle down and be less of a bloody bother for me daughter. Good boy, son, good boy. Some people drive further up the road from where I came in to the village and go up to the Winter's Gibbet, I think they call it, um, where the old Hangman's um, Noose um, Gibbet was, and walk into the forest over that direction and come across here. But I've never done that before. I don't know where the path takes you to and where it leads you to when you, when you come off the main road, because there's a bit of a lay-by across the road from the Winter's Gibbet. where the hangman's noose was years ago. Right, so it's much better daylight now. Really bright sky over there. Back to the right there. Right, come here, come here. But just further up there, halfway up the road there, there's a right turn.
So as you can see, there's several trucks that went through the forestry when all the when this was all trees as well before the chopper mill room. But they're, they're really used now, and that's why the gate's padlocked off. Oh, because it, it's not a main truck, it's just a secondary one that was created for like um, forestry commission vehicles to go through and uh, bring the trees out. But you can still see evidence of storm Orwin where the trees have all blown over and they're all leaning up against each other up there on the left. Right, come here, son. Let's take a photograph. Wait, don't pull. Come here. Come here. Wait. Wait. Hi. Hi. Wait. Hey, no one back there. Where them dog waters are. Sun's coming up. Right. Good boys on. Right, so I'm far, far enough into the the forest now where there's no livestock. So I'll let him off. Come here, come here, come here, because he's dragging me up. Get, come here. Here. Come here. Yeah. He not realise he's off the leader. <laughs> not yet anyway. We soon will if you're running up the road there. Right, I'll put his leader in my pocket. Ready for the pull him back on him in case I see anything. Like um, an odd wandering sheep on his arm that's come too far up into the forest. But there's the sun just breaking up the top, the, over the top of the, the trees there now. Beautiful. Who's a good boy? <laughs> good boy, son, good boy. That's him happy now. He just trot along on his own pace, backwards and forwards, sniffing and peeing on everything. So my daughter's just gonna to have to keep him uh, in, possibly take him out on a night time only, and put the leader on, and if, if, if it turns to that, where well, he's gotta have a muzzle on, well, not that I'm agreeing with it, but, if that's what she's got to do until this puppet government, these evil bastards get uh, caught enough to get more and executed for crimes against humanity. This fake politician's government that would get placed into power, not elected by the so-called ruling elite, that's what they call themselves. He does that all the time. He has a pee on something and he scratches and covers it over. And the same when he goes to the toilet and all, he's like a cat. Once he's had a, a poop, he scratches the ground and flicks it on top of where, where he's just gone to the toilet. So he's a clean bugger as well. <laughs> Good boy, son. Hey. You know, dog, dog owners will appreciate what I'm talking about when you say, you know, it, to have a dog is it's a wonderful experience. They're so loving unconditionally, they're good company. They obviously protect you, protect your property. And obviously anybody coming anywhere near me and they see the size him one along they'll go up oh, and they keep well away so I'll not get attacked by anybody in a hurry. Not unless they want to lose that arm and a leg. <laughs> Good boy, son, good boy, good boy. He's looked as if to see, is this for real? Am I, am I allowed to do what I want to do on the boot there off the leader? Now I've came into Harwood Forest, just about every direction you can think of. I've come across from Simon's side at uh, Lordenshaw Car Park. I've come in from Darden Loft. I've come in from the village back there. I've come across um, from Spilo, across past Cork and um, Cane, walked around the, the road and visited the three properties that was involved in the, the forestry. Um, first one was um, Fallow Lees, 
form. Second one was red path abandoned form after cutting through the trees. And third of all was um, right at the top of the, the Howard Forest is Chortnas outdoor activity place where people rent it out and do outdoor, outdoor activities and what have you. Right, so here's the right turn coming up now where you, you turn right here. You just follow the road right around about three quarters of a mile. And it takes you to Red Path Abandoned from. When I, when I drove up here in my four wheel drive, I just went straight on and bared around the right, then left and then went up and followed the little country roads to um, get to Chortnas. Then I drove, drove up the top where Dorden Lough is and Little Lough, the lakes. Good boy, son, good boy. <laughs> he realises there's a ditch there, that's good. And uh, usually they're full of water. Just where I parked the car, there's a, a deep ditch and it is full of water. Right, so you can see loads of pile, piled up logs of trees here where I've cut them down and piled them up ready to take away. I've just seen a, there's a rabbit running, running along just underneath the edge of the trees here. Good boy, son, good boy. Right, so it's not that one I take, I think it's the next one. Obviously this sign coming up on the right hand side there, that'll be saying, warning, uh, tree harvesting going on. Well, like I say, with it being a Sunday, you've got no workmen, so you're not here chainsaws going on, tree grabbers, etc, etc. I hate that. That's why I detest when the government were making people carry bloody bags to pick up dog shite. Because that's what they do when they put them in bags. Instead of trying to find a bin or something, they just dump them and that just an eyesore. And it's unhygienic as well. It's a bloody health hazard. And plastic bags do not break down, they don't rot and go back into the land. So if you just left the dog, um, left its poop or get a stick and flick it to the side. That's all you need to do. Stick and flick. You know, it's always harvesting sight ahead. So that's where they're chopping all those trees down. And there you can see all the way back the way I've just come up, look, from the village. Look, I'm doing there. Right, continue with my journey. Up we'll go. <laughs> what are you doing, son? What are you doing? Well, I had a dog called Floyd, Floydy. Um, he was my dog's son. Um, one of, he was one of the litter that he crossed with um, Kaya. And they had six puppies. And one of them was Floyd. And he was roughly his size that he is now. And unfortunately, he was he's so heavy, he was running fast, and he, he went to turn, I tried to stop quick, 
and he ended up hurting his bloody leg. And then from that time on, he was just never the same. And eventually he just died in my sister's arms. Through the, he just died through the night. And I think it was cancer. So, like I say, people, do not give your dog drinks of water from the tap because it's, flu, flu, it's full of fluoride, what they poison us with as well. And it's, it's well established now that it leads to cancer. So, further down the, lo the, the road, they're dropping down deep with cancer because they don't want to have pets. I'm not sure if it's, if it's to do with them. Um, the no dogs can be vicious and protect us humans. So if they get rid of the dogs, and obviously they wanted to take the guns away from people in America, so they can't defend themselves. So I don't know if it's control or these um, Dracos, or what do they call them? Reptiles, reptilians. They might be absolutely terrified of dogs and they do want dogs in, on this planet, on this earth as well. On this flat earth that we live on. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I want to know why all of a sudden they're attacking dogs and demonising them to get rid of them. Where are you going? Hey, hey, where are you going? Come on, how it? Come on, come on here. Hey, come on. This is where you, it's, I like, I like to see you behaving yourself and doing this tool. Come on, here. Come on, come on. There he is. <laughs> Good boy, son. Good boy. Good boy. Praise him when he's coming back. Good boy, son. Oh, kicking stones. So I woke up quite early this morning and I thought, alright, oh, I might as well just get up and start getting ready. Kill time. And by the time you boil up, boil up the kettle, make yourself a hot cup of just waiting for it to cool so I could take a few mouthfuls before I came out. Good boy, son, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> he's getting bloody good at jumping, like, I mean, he's struggling to jump up into the back of the car at first with him being younger because he wasn't quite sure of himself, but now he just leaps and he, 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 jump, he jumps higher than he needs to and then he just lands on all four <laughs> in the back of the car. So he's getting good strong legs. And as you can see, he's well built, strong as a bull. You want to know it, that's why he pulls me bloody arms off out the sockets when I've grown on a leader. So he has a passing place coming up on the right. 